Alrighty, welcome back to Armchair Coaching. No Didier today because he didn't get the memo that we were filming this today, unfortunately. So thank you for the feedback so far on this series of videos. We've had some really good feedback across both lifters and coaches. So we're gonna continue running this up until after Junior Nats. Today we're gonna to be discussing Patrick Avis. So Paddy Avis, who's one of our, uh, he's actually one of our previous interns here. He's a strength coach and a personal trainer in the southeast of Melbourne here. This will be his second Junior Nats and I think his third competition. It's third competition. Third competition. Charlie coaches him, so we're gonna go, actually Didier just got here now. So Charlie's gonna be going through his program today uh, and in fact his entire lead up. Some of the things that we've done with Paddy, we're just gonna use a case study here uh, and how we've programmed Paddy for what looks to be a very strong, successful competition so far. He's moving some Definitely some PR weights already. Um, we're still four or five weeks out, four weeks out, I think. So, Charlie will be taking over. Alrighty, so we're gonna go into the start of Paddy's block leading into Junior Nationals. His last competition was also Junior Nationals in August last year. So then what we ran with Paddy, I'm gonna be looking at the screen because Jamie's gonna put this up on the screen with my uh, audio at the top. So we've got his transition block post comp. So this is coming out of Junior Nationals. A two week, very non-specific, high rep, uh, sort of deload washout period. If you look on day four here, it's got some sumo deadlift. Paddy Avis is a conventional puller. He asked for some sumos in there because he wanted to work on them. So good time post comp, we can get a little bit non-specific. Play around with some stuff. Just for reference, this is probably about 30 weeks out. It's, it's a long while. Because I started here 23 weeks out was when I started after the first two blocks. So this is probably 30, 32 weeks out, somewhere around there. Um, so we go to block five, first block. The first thing to know with Paddy is that I communicate with him on the phone at the end of each block. We have fairly in detail conversations. He's also a coach himself. He's done our internship. He's very, very heavily invested in learning and just applying principles. I know he did um, the JPS. Uh, He's doing the mentorship. Mentorship, went to one of their seminars. Jacob, who very heavily talks about body, uh, powerlifters, spending some time doing some bodybuilding hypertrophy work, something I have done myself. So Paddy was very keen to do that, some play around with that sort of stuff. Just so, on that, don't skip over that point. That's something that we heavily push with a lot of our guys. And I think it's something worth noting that you should be spending some time away from the big lifts and trying to build some muscle. At the end of the day, Muscle tissue is what is actually moving the weight. You can only get so efficient with your nervous system and technique. After you've been lifting for a couple of years, if you've had good coaching from the onset with your technique, the only real variable that you can continually push is building more muscle. So you do need to, and, and handling more training volume. So you need to build muscle and spend some time away from the lifts. So this is how we handled Paddy in this so situation. So Paddy wanted to focus on sticking at the same intensity, so the same weight and increasing reps. So we started at, you can see here, week one, three sets of 10 at 60, I had 60 to 65, but he went 65 kilograms. And then by week six was doing five by 10 at 65. So we can see there's a large increase in volume there, uh, purely by just adding sets and uh, adding sets. The reps and intensity haven't changed. Then just very non-specific, dumbbell shoulder press, flat dumbbell press, uh, pec flies, and then the back work of choice. Same thing with the low bar squats. Uh, started three sets of eight at 100 to 100, 100 to 110 prescribed weight, uh, working all the way up to five sets of eight. So the same concept there, plus hack squats, Bulgarian split squats, and hamstring curls. So very sort of body building style of movements, GPP stuff um, and then we've gone to feet up bench same thing very high reps 10 reps and 12 uh, reps um, barbell overhead press same thing working all the way up to five sets of 12 uh, and then also chest supported row four sets of 20 so as you can see very far down the bodybuilding end, bodybuilding yeah. end of training hypertrophy end of training uh, and then again, Paddy wanted to keep working on sumo deadlifts. He's a coach himself. I think he just wanted to learn the skill, the skill because he potentially will have to coach it himself. So why not spend a little bit of time doing it now while we're so far out from comp? Um, but then again, we did that first to prioritize that as a technique, uh, the technique while we're fresh and coming into the session. And then the second movement, comp deadlift, which is his conventional deadlift. 
The conventional, my battery's about to die. Uh, the conventional deadlift and same thing started at three by eight and worked up to four by eight. Here we kept intensity increasing as well as sets uh, reps remained the same. So heading into block six, we ran a very similar thing. I don't need to go through that too much. Same sort of concept um, as you can see on the screen here. Had a bit of a deload in week one and then uh, weeks, week two, uh, we started the same sort of concept. We just re-ran that whole cycle again. He wanted to stay with it, he was feeling good. Um, that's another important thing, listen to, if you are programming, listen to your athlete. See what they like. Uh, Eric Helms, number one rule of programming is adherence. No point writing the best program if they're not gonna adhere to it. So this is what me and Paddy worked on together. Uh, same thing, we moved to some high bar squats just to get away from low bar. Uh, ran the same, that same model of uh, increasing sets. Uh, and then, yeah, kept most of the stuff pretty much the pretty same. Similar Feet up bench, added in some AM wraps. Uh, so AM wraps or Myo reps is something that you can use quite uh, far away from this comp. Uh, with this, we kept running the block. So just because the template finished the six, week, six weeks, Paddy was feeling good, so we kept running it. We ran it for another week. Um, and this is where my sort of emerging strategies, uh, Mike Tashira concepts are starting to come out, is just because we plan to run the block for X amount of weeks, but if you're feeling good, why not milk it and go an extra week or two? Um, it's something I've started to use with a lot of guys is when I only deload them once they ask for it. Like when I, I, I ask them, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Is your um, arousal to train still quite high? Are you feeling good? Is the, the weight still increasing? Yep, 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 keep going. I'm not gonna stop uh, just because we decided at the start that it should be six weeks. Um, and this is something that Bryce Krawcheck also does with myself. So we pushed that another week and then we headed to block seven. Now we started to take into account how far are we away from nationals. We are 23 weeks out. So I said to Paddy, I wanted to start getting a little bit more specific again um, with some strength work. So we headed, we still kept the bench press reps quite high, um, sets of eight, and still kept some sort of bodybuilding movements in there because we're still so far out from comp. But with our low bar squat, we started to head into some sets of five. Fives and sixes here for our strength. You got something to put in? Yeah, I was just gonna say, you can see how um, the, the rep range is lowering over the block, which is indicative that uh, strength is starting to, or intensity on the barbell is starting to become one of the more primary drivers of the adaptation rather than just increasing sets um, per week. So we can see that occurring on both day one and day two here. Yeah, um, something you'll see here on day two where I've got the five, five, five and then four, four, four. I've actually stopped doing this now. Um, this was written yeah, obviously five, five months ago. I just keep the sets, uh, the, rep, the rep range the same the whole way through. So we're either doing fours or fives um, and just let either adding sets or intensity be the driver of volume. Um, so this is, yeah, 23 weeks out. So I said to Patty, we want to head into a little bit more specific movements. Um, as you can see, the blocks before were in that 10 to 12 rep range. Now we're starting to hit, go into that five to eight rep range more so. Um, so that was that block. And then as we head into now, block eight, 17 weeks out. What have we got for Patty? Uh, perfect, competition bench press, sets of five. Low bar back squats, sets of six and five. Three count pause bench. So we start adding our accessory movements to actually work on some technical execution, technical execution of the uh, competition movements or some flaws that we may have. So if it's some inconsistency with our down phase and our bench press, we might add in some tempo bench. Uh, for Paddy here, we've got long count pauses, three count pauses, higher rep range, four sets, three, uh, four reps and three reps. And then we've removed sumo deadlifts as well. Um, and gone back to just competition, deadlift being conventional, sets of five. So a little bit more specific to actually increasing strength. Uh, and yeah, we do actually we do have a bench press here with a three second tempo, sets of five and six. Something to note with a lot of our, a lot of our prescriptions here at Strength Culture in regards to those accessory movements. So Charlie was talking about a three count pause bench press and a lot of our squatting accessories as well and even deadlifting, which is starting to happen too. Um, we believe that strategies that make you a better lifter are probably better to be utilized. So tempo work, paused work, uh, and all that sort of stuff probably offers more bang for your buck than overload sort of strategies. So like board pressing or 
um, even like slingshot work for bench press, chains, chains, chains and, and overloads in that sort of strategy. Um, we find that getting better control of the barbell and spending more time with time under tension, better coordination, better motor control of the skill is a far better bang for your buck exercise or technique sort of driver than doing overload work. So that's starting to be shown here with Paddy's programming as well. So now we're heading into block nine, which will take us 11 weeks out from comp. Um, and using some of that emerging strategies, uh, concepts that I've learned, um, we realize with Paddy, he usually after about week six is when he starts to hit the wall and starts to be like, I'm ready, I'm cooked, I'm, I need a deload. So I wanted to make his comp block six weeks out. So we're 11 weeks out. So now we're doing a five week strength block. Um, we start adding in some, as you can see here, day one competition bench press. We start adding in some top end sets. So we're working off a top double with then back off sets um, because as we know, competition, we're trying to lift heavy singles. So we need to start exposing ourselves to higher intensities. And you can also see here uh, with the RPE prescription, some of that wave loading that we talked about in one of the previous episodes, that's a good example of it, how we're wave loading up to like an 8.5. Uh, across the block with the back off percentage. So if you just scroll across there so you can see this too, they would be the back off percentage off a projected max. So this is where we get that RPE sort of strategy uh, that we prefer to program with. And we think it's, uh, it's a very viable option that most people should at least be learning and understanding that RPE training. Uh, so it's specific to the individual on the specific day. And another option you can do here is actually not uh, change the RPE prescription here and leave them all as eights. Uh, and leave these all as 0.8 or 0.78 depending on your lifter and then as this increases over the weeks this will also increase so this should but if you do come in on a day where you're feeling a bit shit poor sleep had a fight with your girlfriend you're upset um those changes those changes are accounted for those sort of days trying, are accounted for i'm trying to for. think of something else funny to say but i'm not a funny person <laughs> so um yeah, those changes will be accounted for. So training doesn't always need to be linearly progressing. Um, and I think this is a flaw that I see with your standard linear progression models. Um, we're not robots. Variables are not kept the same in our lives. We don't sleep, go to bed at the same time. We don't eat the same foods every day. We don't get the same amount of sleep. We don't drink the same amount of water. We don't have, uh, we might have a big weekend, have a few drinks. Things change and variables change. So. Um, Using, having, yeah, using having, the RPE system really allows you to capitalize on good days and really sort of just strip the weight back a little bit on your, your off days when things aren't going well. I highly recommend right. looking at our previous video that Charlie completed on that. Um, I'll put that, here's the thumbnail and I'll put the link in the bio, uh, in the description as well there's if you're a, interested. There's a couple there. We'll start pushing some more RPE content. So, same thing, ran the exact same thing with comp squat, top set of a triple and then double in week four and five with your back off sets. Um, Again, this is actually something that I am changing now. I'm not actually prescribing uh, the reps to change. If I was gonna do this again, I'd probably just do all doubles and then all sets of four, all sets of five as back off. Just something I've changed. I feel that works better. Again, emerging strategies. I, I, I do that with most of my guys as well. We're not um, setting a And I almost only exclusively program top singles now, unless we're in volume phases and I do like a top set of five with, with back off eights or sixes. Uh, a lot of my top step work now with my guys is just singles. No matter how far out from comp we are, and I just play around with your back off variables and back off percentages based off the RPE. Uh, we're always constantly changing and adapting our strategies here for, as Charlie said, those emerging strategies that seem to be working better for our athletes. And that's something that I've been doing as well. Because we don't program exactly the same. Um, so, it, it, but we do use heavily RPE based as it, in fact, almost exclusively RPE based, unless the individual athlete has requested that they don't have an RPE based program, which we're more than happy to do that because at the end of the day, adherence is key number one. I'm um, still moving away from that. I used to be like, no, if the athlete wants to not do RPE, I'm gonna prescribe their numbers. But I, I've i moved away from that and I've, and Paddy was actually one of them that I actually asked for more number based prescriptions and I said as a coach I think you should learn to use RPE and really be critical use your brain use your brain what am I going to hit today I started teaching him like more concepts of how to select weight I think it is something that if you are serious about your training you should learn to use RPE even if you're getting prescribed numbers learn to if you get a weight give it an RPE um, it is a very useful it's tool a useful and skill. it shows that you actually care about your training and you want to get better um, it's very easy just walking and go, my coach said hit this and then I just hit that. Um, 
Yeah, so next thing, so again, three count pause bench, so we kept that the same, set to four. Uh, as you can see, I've started to not change the uh, reps, so this is probably the turning point, yeah, three months ago. Uh, and then same thing for the comp deadlift, ran the same same loading uh, loading progression here of triples with back off sets of a five, top double with back off sets of a four. So we've got some consistency across the competition uh, lifts across the whole block here. Uh, how far out are we? We are it's 11 weeks. At the end of this block, we'd be seven weeks out. And then as we There's can a see, week six deload. Deload was a week six. Uh, we went for a very non-specific deload. I changed the variables completely. Um, something I've learned off Mike Tashira and my coach as well. It's called a washout, where you just literally give them com completely random shit. Uh, hopefully, desensitize them to the stimulus, and then when they come back to the, the more specific stuff that are a bit more hypersensitive. Uh, we actually discussed this in week one or week two of our, this, this series here. Yeah. So uh, again, I'd, I'd heavily, I'd, I'd recommend going to look back at that. Um, and then now we're in the, we're in the comp phase comp here. Phase. So comp phase, pretty standard comp block, what Jamie was talking about, as we can see here, uh, top singles, running the whole way through. Um, 78% for back offs the whole way through for sets of four. This is the RPE progression we've been using because we do find that people love to overshoot in week one. So instead of prescribing them an eight and they go to an 8.5 in week one, we prescribe them a seven so they overshoot to a 7.5. And so then it works perfectly. So that's a, that's a little tool that we just use that we've found because everyone does overshoot as much as you educate them. Um, Particularly coming into competition phases, after after going through a period where you've got, like Paddy has here, a big volume phase, uh, he's definitely put on weight, he hired a nutrition coach through through this period, Joey Zingini. Joey Zingini. Um, but over this period, it, it's quite, and this is just sports psychology at the end of the day, but understanding your athlete and, and almost being a step ahead of them in the decision that they're going to make. Um, and this is just a strategy that we've utilized that has worked really, really well. Starting comp phases uh, at lower RPE. So I even program a few of our bigger guys. Uh, so Dave Dobson got 6.5s as well as Dave Briguglio who doesn't train He's not going to junior nats, but he's a very strong lifter. He benches 190 kilos um, and, and squats and deadlift as well, well over 200. Uh, it's a strategy that we use here where we wave load that top single up from like a 6.5 increasing, as you can see here, a 7, 7.5, 8, and then into like a top set, depending on the lift, uh, potentially up to an 8.5, particularly for bench press or smaller lifters who have quicker recoveries. Yeah, and so we'll go here, we'll use the bench as an example. So, and then you run all the way to week five, and then you can see, I do like to overshoot their single in the last week, 8.5. Um, for bench press? For bench, and even for, for, no, I didn't do it for squat. Yeah, for bench press. I find that it works well with bench press, doesn't quite work um, well with squatting and deadlift. So I haven't done it for squat and deadlift. Yeah. That's good. Doing the right thing. And then um, you can see here in the taper week, we hit the opener, a 7.5, and then a very just bang, drastic uh, drop in volume. Two sets dropped off, hopefully allow for that recovery. Um, we're still doing sets of four in the taper week um, to really ride that those adaptations all the way to comp day, but that drop in volume significantly, it's significantly, two sets off. Um, I know Bryce with me only does one set, um, and it has seemed to work well, so I'm trying two sets. Um, again, I drop about 50% of the volume, so yeah, I'm so similar to this. Two yep. sets. Um, again, there is no right or wrong way. Drop one set, two set, three set, as long as there's a drop in volume to allow that recovery to occur to express top end strength on comp day. Um, this is the whole thing with emerging strategies that you as a coach do need to Be start. aware. Yeah, does two sets work well for Paddy? Does one set work well for Paddy? Um, is yeah, does he need a little less drop in volume? Does he need more? Like these are the things that you can only really develop working with an athlete for comps on end and years on end. Um, you're not gonna learn this stuff in one block with them. Yeah. So this will lead us all the way into comp. Um, and so now we've got yeah, squat, same concept here. Wave load those RPEs, um, drop in volume, and then bench, two count pause bench, triples, comp deadlifts. Just getting slightly more specific across the board here throughout. And so we've spoken about this in previous uh, videos on this series, is if you actually look at block to block to block, very volume, strength, peak. There's a drop in volume across the whole of those blocks and then that real increase in intensity. As we can see from this block, we've gone the top, troop, uh, top single to back offs of threes and fours compared to the previous blocks, which is fours, fives and sixes, compared to the previous blocks, blocks which was eights, tens and twelves. Um, yeah. So 
the actual principles of training, if you look at this, are the same. Um, but those little fluctuations week to week that may occur with RPE are allowed and are okay because as we've seen, Paddy and he's crushing weights at the moment. He's hitting pretty much his old maxes from last comp four RPE eights. So seven, yeah, sevens to eights. Uh, he's he's definitely a, a very technically a technically sound lift. Cool. So that's pretty much the end of uh, that video today. Do you want to cover anything else? I think we've got one more before the actual. So maybe next one we'll go into setting up uh, competition plans, how we can go about selecting openers, last warm-ups and all that sort of stuff, some of the yeah, strategies that we use cool. for that, because uh, I think it's a misunderstanding that all of a sudden there's gonna be some magic in the taper, when really it's just an extrapolation of your training numbers. I don't see why it should be anything else. Uh, you're not gonna come out of the taper and hit a 30 kilo PR out of nowhere. Uh, it just doesn't happen unless your training wasn't really that intense. Um, so that's definitely some stuff we can go into designing comp plans and, and, and yeah. selecting warm-ups and, and openers and all that sort of stuff And then I think we just got a recap and that will be the end of the recap and that'll be it But that, the comp plan one will be good because yep. that'll be uh, good. Cool, so we'll check in with two weeks uh, as always if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe uh, And share it with somebody who you think might might get some benefit out of it, but if Nothing else. No, nah, happy lifting. Happy lifting. Flex them down. Happy chichin. Cheech, done.